what are you observing it's very interesting to see how collective behavior of party can give rise to different phenomena right now look at the bottom only gives that form the steam that fire has it doesn't make sense to talk about steam or water when you have just one party right but if you have a collection of water molecules they interact in some special way giving rise to different states of matter like gas solid when you have a collection of particles they be interact in some complicated way giving rise to different phenomena not just different phases but a plethora of phenomena existing in nature we see say the sort of collectivity of particles what phenomena exactly are we talking about here for example if you look at swarm of bees There are a lot of them. It depends upon the temperature of the system and various parameters. Temperature is one of the key parameters of the system. For example, if you have a collection of bacteria or a colony of bacteria in water, it forms with small groups like you see in the test case. Look at the white squares and black squares in the test case. Right? Think of the white squares as squares in which the density of bacteria is pretty high, and the black squares as squares in which there are scarcely any bacteria. So, if you have bacteria in water, and if the temperature and other conditions are favorable, you would have colonies of bacteria that resemble this test case. Phenomena is kind of similar. You can map it to, say, a magnetic system. For example, if you have a ferromagnet, you would have domains of, you know, up spin and domains of down spin, or in other words, domains where the magnetization is pointing only in one direction and domains where magnetization is pointing in only in another direction. So we just switch the temperature to a temperature above the critical point. Magnetization is destroyed. You mentioned uh, critical temperature here, right? Yeah. So what's that? So the critical temperature is the temperature at which this transition happens. The transition from an ordered phase in which there are domains to a disordered phase in which magnetization or even density of bacteria is completely random. Yeah. Does this parameter necessarily have to be a uh, temperature, or can it be something else? So when I used the word temperature, I used it in a very generic sense. Of course, in the case of uh, water, the parameter is the temperature that we talk usually about in undergraduate courses. We talk about the degree of coldness or hotness, which is usually the temperature that we talk about in thermodynamics. But here, the temperature or the parameter that controls the phase transition can be different from the undergraduate temperature. For example, in calculation models, you would have a probability as a temperature. How does this interest you? Is this something that you are working on? So, if you look at a lot of statistical systems, they might be completely different. For example, a flock of birds, a swarm of bees, or colonies of bacteria, and a magnet are completely different systems. Right. The interaction between bacteria is completely different from the interaction of atoms in a magnetic system, right? Yet, their collective behavior shows some striking similarities. This gives us an intuition that we can somehow model this according to, according to some common mathematical model or common theory or something. And this similarity. Is even more, you know, drastic or even more uh, striking. Striking, yeah. At the critical point, at the critical point, you would even have certain numbers called critical exponents, which are exactly the same. Yeah. Imagine even the numbers are the same for different, drastically different systems. Mm -hmm. So this is the point of four points in phase diagram. This is the point that interests me the most. Mm -hmm. That has been my research in the last five years. What systems have you been dealing with? A class of systems which shows the same kind of critical behavior, mm -hmm. or more precisely, the same kind of critical scaling behavior. So those class of systems form what is known as a universality class. So my work focuses on identifying universality classes which do not go to an equilibrium state but a non-equilibrium state. What is the equilibrium state? So if you have a large collection of particles and if you leave them. Like that, without disturbing them. After a long, long time, it will reach some so-called steady state. This steady state can be either be an equilibrium state, which is a very specific state, or a non-equilibrium state. Mm -hmm. So, an equilibrium state is a very specific state in which there are no currents in the system or no heat passing through the system. All other states are non-equilibrium states. So, can you give me a real-life example of a non-equilibrium system? Yeah. 
imagine look at this cup of coffee imagine you are stirring it then the system after a long time will not reach an equilibrium state why because as you stir it the water molecules might be moving in an average constant velocity so which doesn't change this time and the temperature of the system might remain constant or reach some constant value after long time in that sense it's in a steady state but it's not in an equilibrium state basically if i am right are you working on the critical points of the systems that don't reach an equilibrium right yeah more or less right not all non equilibrium systems show non equilibrium critical behavior at the critical point mm-hmm. so there are certain systems which are genuinely which are non equilibrium even at the critical point so my work concerns those systems which are genuinely non equilibrium or which shows such behavior even at the critical point it's quite interesting actually yeah so What do you say? Let's finish our game. 